Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we have some news on the Godot engine front. This is actually a follow-up to a story I did back in, I believe it was December, and that is on the Vulcan port going on on the Godot game address. What you see in front of you, this is the Sun Temple example running inside of Godot. Uh, it's relevant later on in the video, but at least needed some eye candy to get things going, and this plays a starring role in what we were talking about today. So what exactly are we talking about today? Well, uh, back in December, Google announced that they were going to hire on behalf of uh, the Godot Foundation, the group behind The Forge. So this was a three-way partnership between Godot, Google, and the game engine experts The Forge to improve Vulkan support on mobile devices in the Godot game engine. Uh, so basically, Google is committed to enhance the Android gaming ecosystem by ensuring that Vulkan is well supported across many games, game engines, and devices. Lucky for us, this means they have decided to help us ensure that our Vulkan mobile renderer is as efficient as possible. Forge is one of the premier developers in the world, building in custom game engines and rendering solutions, as well as optimizing existing game engines. Uh, Forge will spend the next several months working on on Godot and bringing their expertise to our engine. They will be uh, assisted by experts at Google and of course Godot contributors. Uh, so this was the announcement. They're going to be working for the next several months on Godot. Well, next several months later, we have the result. First, a little bit about the Forge. Again, these are uh, the kind of a, a specialist troubleshooting company on optimizing game engines. So they do things like evaluating game engines, extending game engines, optimizing game engines, which is what is relevant here, and also building custom game engines. They also have their own game engine called, conveniently enough, the Forge that you could go ahead and check out. Uh, so they are basically a gun for hire in the world of game development. So now their collaboration is done. So we just got an update from uh, the Godot Foundation on what has happened with this uh, partnership with the Forge. So let's go through that right now. So this was actually released on a Friday. This video is going to come out on a Saturday because nobody's paying attention in a Friday afternoon. So our collaboration with Google and The Forge has achieved its original goal of improving performance in the Vulkan backend and enhancing our Vulkan API usage. Work started in mid-November, uh, so they announced it in December. Uh, and I have to say, the last few months went very by very fast. Overall, I'm happy to report that we finished everything that we've been planned for this collaboration. Uh, most of the work is targeted at improving the Vulkan backend and will benefit all platforms that use Vulkan. If you don't know what Vulkan is, basically it is the next generation of OpenGL. So uh, if you draw things on screen using a model, Modern computer. You're using basically one of three rendering, I guess four rendering systems. Uh, you've got OpenGL and Direct3D. Uh, and then on top of that, you also have Vulkan now, as well as Metal when you're dealing with uh, Mac OS devices. So it's the API used to actually draw graphics quickly on your screen. Uh, so uh, what they have done here, they highlighted uh, list of improvements is too long, but highlights are use of unified memory architecture buffers when available, added Android thermal API support. Uh, so that is for basically throttling under load, that kind of stuff. Make sure that it doesn't get too hot or more optimized. Your CPU and GPU usage based off of, you know, battery runtime. So things run as performantly as possible, that kind of stuff. Uh, replace a large push constants with uh, dynamic uniform buffers, optimize descriptor sets and descriptor set batching, optimize swap chain operations and integrate swappy frame pacing from the Google AGDK. Now, one of those things about working with Vulkan is it is an absolute pain in the butt to get right. So having a specialist come in and work on it is a good thing. So during the project, they tested with two different 3D scenes. The first one we saw right here. So again, this is uh, one of their test scenes. Uh, this is the Sunroom project from um, originally from Epic Games. Uh, so this was what they used for basically benchmarking the performance uh, on their device. And in we go. Uh, by the way, on a mobile 4090, that, those are the kind of frames you can expect here for you know reference for what's coming up. Uh, and uh, yeah, so th they used uh, that one and they used um, another one. They also, so also the other one was the uh, third person shooter demo. Uh, so the standard Godot TPS. Um, they also used Google Pixel 7 and Samsung S23. Uh, they saw a consistent 10 to 20% redu reduction in GPU frame times. You can think of that as basically 10 to 20% more frames. So each, the time that it took to render a frame on screen went down by 10 to 20%. Uh, since mobile devices are currently heavily GPU bottlenecked in 3D scenes, this translates directly to a 10 to 20% frame time improvement. 
Uh, collaboration covered more than just performance, covered integrating tools like Android Thermal API, which can be used to monitor and respond to changes in thermal state of the device. Importantly, this allows you to automatically scale down quality to maintain a high frame rate and cool temperature. Stay tuned for more documentation. Uh, work was developed in a private fork of Godot that was kept up to date with our main branch and is a work in progress. The final work product can be assessed in this PR. We'll look at it in a second. They're not going to merge that PR as one giant one. They're going to split it up into a bunch of different uh, PRs that can be merged into a Godot 3 and Godot 4.4 releases coming forward. Uh, so this is uh, done. Uh, so it's not just for mobile, but obviously they, they tested it on uh, Pixel and Samsung S23 as they went. But if you're getting faster Vulkan and you're using Vulkan on desktop, this just benefits basically everybody. But the focus of the optimization was definitely on mobile. So here is the final um, collaboration between Google and the Forge. Uh, 185 commits to go into uh, master at some point in time. Here's where you can actually download those two examples. So a, a modified version of the third person shooter demo, as well as the Sun Temple demo that you saw in action. And here is the performance ramifications that they saw. So Sun Temple that we saw here, a frame took 26.1 milliseconds on a Pixel 7 to generate after being optimized down from 29.1. GPU frame time went to 25.81 from 28.6. Uh, CPU frame time went from 4.85, sorry, from, from 5.01 to 4.85, and memory usage stayed pretty much identical. You're gonna find that across the board. Memory usage stayed consistent across all of these changes that they've made. Uh, and then in the third person shooter, uh, lesser results, to be honest, uh, between the two. Uh, and then when we jump over to the Samsung S23, you actually see more profound results here. We went from 22 milliseconds down to 16 milliseconds and from 25 uh, for frame generation time to 19.6. Uh, and CPU went down from 5.27 to 4.2. And in the world of the third person uh, shooter demo, uh, much less pronounced results, but still uh, looks like 10%-ish. Uh, changes there. Um, so yeah, that is the final results of this collaboration. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're at. So basically, going forward, it's going to be split between uh, Godot Engine 4.3 and 4.4, the results of that project. Uh, so again, it was a multi-part thing, so they're going to split it up and merge it into the next two releases of Godot. Uh, 4.3 is coming in like any day now, maybe next month, uh, whereas 4.4 is probably going to be three or four months down the road if we follow the consistent schedule that we've got right now. But this does give you an idea of uh, what we're going to see in terms of Vulkan rendering improvements coming going, going forward. And it looks like the end result, uh, at least on the Android devices that they tested, was a... Uh, 20, 15 to 20, sorry, a 10 to 20 percent improvement uh, in frame rate time. And then, of course, you've got those other advantages such as the new thermal API on Android, uh, etc. going forward. So that is the end of the announcement. The collaboration between uh, the Godot game engine and the specialists at Vulkan who were paid for by Google is now over. And this is what we got out of it. So again, uh, optimizations to the actual Vulkan renderer, which should help all platforms. Uh, and then again, support for the thermal API from Android, uh, which is, again, a way of setting the performance. So again, if you thermal throttle on a device, on Android device, it's pretty useless. So this is going to help you from, prevent you from doing so. And then we also have a swappy uh, frame pacing. Uh, it's part of the AGDK level. It helps OpenGL and Vulkan games achieve smooth rendering and correct frame pacing on Android. Uh, so it's a way of keeping a more smooth and consistent frame rate across time. I don't know the specifics of it, to be honest, but that is also implemented in this release. So that is the fruits of that labor of the collaboration between uh, the Godot game engine, Google, and the Forge. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.